Louisiana 42, Liberty 14, and who Billy Napier, like putting on a show against Hugh Freeze. What uh, what did you see out of this one? Because I I had it on, and once it got to be you know 21 to 14, and then it was 28 to 14, and then it was 35 to 14, and I just I stopped. Like this this looked like exactly what I expected out of a Louisiana team because I, I've told you multiple times this year when they feel threatened, when they feel like people think that the other team is a better team, that's when they actually show up. This was an incredibly efficient showing from Napier's bunch, which also got me the over nine and a half on the season for uh, for Louisiana. Nice. So, <laughs> so I was happy about this one. But uh, but did you see anything that stood out on on this? The postgame win expectancy over at uh, CFB data, by the way, 85% for Louisiana in a 28-point win. So Air Force 99%. With a two point win and Louisiana eighty five percent with a four touchdown win, you gotta love numbers, brother. What uh, what did you see out of this? Uh, so one thing, I mean, total total yards, uh, Liberty and Louisiana were even there, and I I, I mean Levi Lewis only one hundred sixty six yards, but he had three touchdowns, and then Air Force or excuse me, Louisiana, you know, uh, not not a very efficient rushing attack at all. They on, they only had one hundred thirty two y- yards, not not sack adjusted. I think the issue for me here is that um. I mean, there's there's one stat that Hugh, lost him the ball game, right? Like Hugh Freeze. Well, Hugh, yeah. So Malik Willis threw two interceptions. Hugh Freeze has an offensive line problem, and I think we saw it in the Syracuse game that they should have won. Malik Willis was sacked seven times, and 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 they, you know, three. I guess three three interceptions um, overall, but uh, but two of them from from Willis. So I mean, that 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 really is what happened is the offensive line lost to Louisiana's really good defensive line, and and Willis couldn't do anything. Uh, red zone five out of seven for Louisiana, uh, 0 for 1 for Liberty. Also, six turnovers in the ballgame for Louisiana. I mean, I mean for uh, Liberty, excuse me. That is, yeah, that, that'll get you yeah. beat, especially when the other team does not turn it over at all. Just absurd. Just absurd. Yeah, well, and, and if you look at Liberty, I mean, the, the, the Louisiana Monroe game was another one where, I mean, I had them winning by 20 and they lost by three. Yeah. They had three, they had first and 10 at the 32, first and goal at the two, first and 10 at the 16, and got zero points out of all three of those. They're terrible at finishing. And some of that tells me they don't have the athletes outside and they don't have the athletes up front. Uh, so they're, they're struggling a little bit this year. It's interesting to see what he will do. Now, you, uh, you've got that right. I, I, wonder, I wonder if he is interested at all in taking some of these other jobs because I've heard his name mentioned for Miami and for Virginia Tech. I don't think he comes back to the SEC because I think the SEC would just be, they'd watch him like a hawk, like constantly. So you can't even get your job done, really, if, if you're being watched like that. But in the ACC, I could see him being successful at some of those places. But also, why would you leave Liberty? You're being paid $3 million a year to be at a private school in Virginia where nobody can FOIA your, your phone records or anything like that. Like, you're just out in the woods doing what you want to do in Lynchburg. Like, why leave? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that would be smart for him. Uh, but you never know what some of these guys ambition, how some of their ambition manifests. Tell yeah, us that. I, I think he wants to be able to get back on the stage and, and prove people wrong over and over and over again. That's yeah. that's just his thing. And he's always been like that, even when he was uh, coaching at Briarcrest High School. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.